Mercury, Chiron, and the North Node are going to make not one, not two, but three fabulous conjunctions over the next three months. And yeah, it's going to be very interesting because it's going to bring us a chance to think, Mercury, and communicate, Mercury, about some deep feelings and even wounds. And it's all going to be regarding our self-identity, who we are, who you are. It's the three planet Terry things. I mean, the North Node's not a planet and Chiron's not a planet, but you know what I mean? Three things coming together. So I'm calling it the three acts of the three amigos. The three amigos! <coughs> so let's break down these parts. Mercury is amigo number one. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm trying not to laugh at my own, <laughs> at my own analogy. Oh my gosh. Mercury is amigo number one. Stay focused. Mercury. Mercury is amigo number one. I'm lucky day! It represents your mind, the way you process information, how you make meaning out of that information, how you communicate it. And that's your input and your output. Mercury is the representative that pulls together all those strings of data to make your reality. It's the story that we're telling ourselves and the story that we tell other people about our reality. Mercury's in Aries, it's focused on these ideas of independence and development of self-awareness. So in the three amigos, they were trying to, they were trying to help a little town become independent. So see how this, this works. Chiron is amigo number two. I'm Dusty Bottoms. And Chiron's a wounded healer, of course. He's the centaur that's half man, half horse. I'm not trying to rhyme. I am so silly today. Okay. And he represents this deep woundedness that we have in general. It's just a wound all the time. There's always something in online right now is Aries Chiron wounds. And it's the power of healing others with that wound. So Chiron understands pain in order to transcend pain. That's kind of his deal. Because Chiron is an Aries, this woundedness or whatever is focused on an area categorized by identity. Chiron is inspired to teach us and heal us when we actively pursue our path, when we blaze through our source to find something out, what is behind it all. And that can bring up a lot of tough questions about who you are and whom you identify with. Amigo number three is the North Node. The North Node. A little... Ned, Ned, maybe. I'm Ned Nidalad. It's like North Node would be Ned with all the ends. Yeah, that makes sense. It's known as the dragon's head or Rahu and is an indicator of this upcoming eclipse. So that's the pinpoint of why this is important. It's coming up in April in Aries, of course, and it's waking up that hungry third little amigo. Wherever there is injustice, you will find us. <laughs> and what is he hungry for? He's hungry for some release hungry for something to begin and something else to close up from the past, ready to move forward. North Node is a forward facing energy. North Node in Aries is looking for some freedom from a bondage or a limitation and doesn't want to compromise the energy of the pioneer anymore. Wants to have independence and push forward, have freedom, fearlessness, courage, all three of them together the three amigos are going to give you a chance to gain some perspective and align with what it means to be independent in your life, in that area of your life, based on the whole sign house that Aries is in and develop some profound self-awareness during this time. Mercury is going to turn retrograde in Aries and it's going to be there for a while, a lot longer than Mercury usually is in any sign. So that puts a significance on that archetypal theme because it's going to be flavoring everything until May 7th. The retrograde gives us three times the three hits of that conjunction. So it's kind of like a three act play or a three act movie. We're gonna use the Sabian symbols from each of those degrees where the conjunction of Mercury and Chiron happen to help us get a bigger narrative picture. Act one is the first conjunction of Mercury and Chiron, which happens March 20th, 2024. This is a magic carpet. That's the symbol for that. And it's a symbol of attainment and training yourself to release the grasping mind Here's what Burgess says, rising above ordinary perception, relaxing the mind supports a creative, positive, visionary way of seeing things, allows for the development of unattached, transcendent understanding. The creative mind can better survey the present situation, and then the stuck routine can be transformed into a new holistic perception. If you uh, 
had kids or grew up anytime around the 90s, you probably remember the Aladdin movie with the magic carpet. That's based on one of the stories from 1001 Nights. And these magic carpets and all the stories, they basically take you from one side or one place to another without a lot of effort. You don't have to really do much. There's something called Solomon's carpet as well. It was 60 miles long and 60 miles wide. When Solomon sat upon the carpet, he was caught up by the wind and sailed through the air so quickly that he breakfasted in Damascus and supped in Medea. We may be ready to open up our minds to a new way of seeing things. So when you're on a flying carpet, you're above flying in the air like a bird, right? And so maybe getting a bird's eye view or a flying carpet's eye's view, I don't know, of detachment and transcendence of old forms. You'd be able to see it from a different perspective is this first step. So it sets the scene for this opening experience for the initiating action. When we have Act 2, the second conjunction of Mercury and Chiron, which happens April 5th, 2024, the symbol is a pugilist entering the ring. I had to look up what a pugilist was. It's a boxer. It's a boxer. This happens on Sabian Civil Aries 21, overwhelming power, two sides of aggression, measuring up to challenges to examine our strengths and weaknesses. The will to power is glorified as the primordial struggle for survival of the fittest and eagerness for fame and fortune. Yet the ring with two fighters can also be seen as the Tai Chi symbol and the interplay between yang and yin. Each of these two types of energy wins in turn. Victory is always temporary in a dualistic world. The second conjunction of Mercury and Chiron happens when Mercury is in retrograde. So this is equivalent of the conflict or the climax of the story where you really know that there's a situation that needs to be resolved. Now, this is the rethinking, the reevaluating, the wrestling with the reality of facing those deep identity wounds, thinking about the, the wrestlers or the boxers in the ring. And you could be feeling a little beat up during this time, or you could be feeling triumphant. You know, it could be one, one way or the other. It's a yin-yang dualism of battle because victory is temporary, defeat is temporary, each has their turn. This could be an opening of your mind to see both sides or multiple sides or whatever, how many sides there are of truth. And that's some good old cognitive dissonance. So we're talking about identity and this could get really deep for some people. It depends on your chart. For some people, it will just be no big deal. But for some people, some of these questions might be coming in your mind, like, does my life really even matter? Yes, your life really does matter. Do I belong here? Yes, you belong here. Who am I? And who are you? You are a miracle of unique life that will never be replicated again, ever, ever, ever. You're deliberately made and you're on a journey to find out the rest of the details and fill in the blanks of that magical question, who am I? That's the whole point of our existence, to figure out who you are. And, and it's a beautiful journey. Act three is going to be the third conjunction of Mercury Chiron on May 7th, 2024. This is Aries 22, the gate to the garden of desire. Abundance arising out of a result of trust, optimism, synergy, sharing, and abundance as life's principles. That's pretty beautiful. Contrasting the fighter's harsh, lonely path, a softer way is open to those who share rather than compete. The benefits of synergy, are then highly significant and the promise of great abundance is fulfilled. Thinking about fighting versus sharing. Also remember, this is all happening within ourselves. It's about you because it's Aries. I am energy, right? Rudyard calls this the gate to the garden of all fulfilled desires. Hmm. This is the third contact, right? Mercury is going to be going direct at this point. And that's always the resolution. In the story, right? You have the initiating action, the conflict climax, and the resolution. Abundance arising out of trust. That's, that's quite lovely. There's so much more that can be accomplished in life when there's an environment of trust and care and love. But it's not guaranteed from the outside world. You know, you can't guarantee that at all. In fact, oftentimes it's pretty rare to feel completely, completely supported, completely loved, completely in an area of trust. Uh, it's hard to get. People hurt each other and people are disrespectful and degrading. And they might reject you or have abused you. But this is not about other people. We're talking about Aries, I am. This is about you. You have to figure out if you can trust yourself. Can you trust yourself? 
Do you feel the synergy of life when you follow your intuition and listen to that quiet voice that's inside of you? This is, this is sharing rather than competing with yourself. When you care for your own garden, this is a garden that we're talking about of all the fulfilled desires. This is all about sort of taking care of ourselves, our own identity wound, and nobody can do it for you. Nobody can do it for you. <laughs> we can provide the love and support for ourselves and create this abundance of trust by really facing the truth. A garden of fulfilled desires is beautiful, but you need to continue to put effort into the garden. Yeah. How do you do that? Learning how to trust yourself, accept yourself as you are, and then keep improving, being guided towards the best version of yourself. The identity wounds are what hold us back because they're actually false. Once you stop believing in those false narratives or using other people's opinions of you as your identity, then you're liberated. But you might have to go to battle and fight for it in the ring with your own mind because they're so ingrained sometimes that we just absolutely believe them as absolute truth. But it's not true. Back to the three amigos. The three amigos! There is a villain in the three amigos and I'm not going to make a villain out of anybody, but I want to say that El Guapo is his name. <laughs> El Guapo is the villain who's trying to you know, take over this little town. And El Guapo is bringing all his guys in. It's kind of like what's happening into Aries. Aries is getting full of all this energy. Mars is the ruler of Aries and he'll be traveling through Pisces during this time, which in astrology speak, technically, is called aversion. For two out of three of these conjunctions of Mercury and Chiron, Mars will also be in Pisces in aversion, and during the total eclipse of the sun on April 8th, it's going to be in aversion. Significantly, the sun and Chiron are going to conjoin a conjunction, and that's going to be on the total eclipse of the sun as well, during the eclipse. Wow. How's that for thematic resonance? Now, Mars is the warrior, of course. It's a representative of drive and the capacity to assert yourself personal drive, right? What, what turns you on? It's passion, it's courage, it's conquest. It's, it's also anger, it's violence, it's war. And when it's in the water realm of Pisces, it's kind of getting this treatment of disillusion. It's almost like it's the end of that cycle for Mars going before it goes back into Aries again. And it's dis being dissolved a little bit and integrated into these bigger ideas, but broken down into like quarks or something. <laughs> but then also expanding universally, conceptually expanding. Pisces is a place where duality is a lot more fluid. It's a lot more integrated. You can see the flow of it rather than stark black and white. This is this and that is that. No. Mars is seeing things a little differently than normal when it's in Pisces. The inner and outer space, transcendence, confusion, compassion, delusion. What does it all mean? It means that there may be some dream or an ideal, which are Piscean, that is being fueled by a spiritual connection. And that's something bigger, a pursuit for the sublime. And sublime is not just beautiful, it's scary. It's going somewhere that's a little frightening. But getting that infusion of courage, the drive and the work towards a greater realization, that's what Mars can do. And when it connects with, with the good old Saturn, ooh, that's going to be interesting. The eclipse is going to represent some major beginnings and endings. So, so this could be the start of something really new, a new concept of yourself. A lot of it's going to have to do with removing some old identity wounds from the past or your childhood or family karma. That's what the North Node's saying. Maybe even relationships, people that hurt you or rejected you or <sighs> deceived you or whatever makes you question your own validity. Those are the events that are designed to make you see through the play. It's all a play. Aries is important to understand your Aries whole sign chart, what it can mean for you. I'm going to do another video with some horoscopes so that you can kind of find out which house Aries falls into in your whole sign chart. So you get an idea of what it could mean more specifically. So I'm saying self-identity, but if it's, if you're an Aries rising, whoa, it's totally about you. But if you're, I don't know, a different rising sign, it could be in your fifth house or it could be in your eighth house or it could be in your 11th house. And those are all different themes. It's self-identity with a filter on it. There's an area of your life that's going to be online 
much more and your identity through that area of life is going to be activated. That makes sense. So in the end of the three amigos, what happens at the end? Of, oh, that's what happens, right? The little town all dressed like amigos. <laughs> that's right. Everybody in the town gets dressed up. And so they all look like the amigos. They all work together to fight El Wapo. That's right. That's right. Oh man. I remember being a little kid and uh, just thinking that was such a freaking hilarious movie. I had no idea what was really going on. <laughs> but I loved the whole thing. I watched it, I'm sure, at least 50 times when I was a kid. I get, I get obsess obsessive about movies and things and just like, until I just had it locked, locked and loaded. So I know all the songs, all the words to My Little Buttercup. My little buttercup has the sweetest smile. Yeah. <laughs> Someday that might come in handy. It might seem a little silly to use the analogy of like three amigos or whatever. The reason I do that is to make it a lot lighter because astrology is just a way of perceiving reality. And there's thematic stuff where we can kind of gauge our attention. We can like, oh, okay, here, this is happening in my sixth house, for example. So I know it's going to be about my self-identity in relationship to uh, service to others and my health and my routine and la 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 la. So it's just points us in the direction rather than having everything be sort of confusing and not have any direction. It helps make meaning of life basically. And and if we can if we can catch a ride on the horse of the three amigos to understand it, then why not? Why not? Ah, I'm stale. <laughs> uh, anyway, I like you just the way you are. And I'll talk to you soon with horoscopes next.